Welcome to the Taking the Lead podcast, where we empower people to be unstoppable. I'm Christina Hapner with my co-hosts, Leslie Hoskins and Timothy Cunio. We just had the pleasure of having Timothy here in Michigan. On campus. That's always so exciting. And in studio, we love when that happens. Yes. Of course. So do I. So, yeah. Yeah, it was also we're celebrating my five-year anniversary with Glacier. Oh, my goodness. That went really, really fast. Yes, it has. I mean, just imagine where I was six, seven years ago, and now where I'm at now has just been totally life-changing. And uh, I got a great dog and a great organization that's backing me up. That's oh, my right. God. Do you feel five years wiser? Uh, my wife would say no. <laughs> <laughs> I do love Cheryl's opinion. <laughs> but having a guide dog, all the stuff and all the knowledge and all the te- things that we've been through, I can help somebody else, you know, with their guide dog or O&M, whatever. I mean, yeah. maybe that point, yes. I mean, I've gone through a lot, a lot of traveling. So uh, maybe I need a little bit on that end, yeah. Well, for sure. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And you've shared so many tips and tricks on this podcast here and when you're going out and traveling and doing presentations, I would absolutely say, and you know, I don't like to disagree with Cheryl, but I would say you're definitely five years wiser. <laughs> I'll, tell, I'll tell her that. Oh, don't tell yeah. her. <laughs> um, <laughs> that made me think about, we started this process of like getting the podcast together and meeting each other like three years ago now. I know. Yeah, because Christina just celebrated what, your three My year three at Leader Dog? year at Leader Dog. So when I was 10 years this year. You guys, we're accomplishing a lot. Yeah. Way to go. Time is flying I can't by. believe when we started that you had only had Glacier for two years. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just came out of the COVID thing. And then, uh, I mean, it's just, it's, it's flying by. It's going, it's going fast. I can relate. My daughter also just turned five. And I cannot believe that mm-hmm. five years have passed. Because, Timothy, when you and I met, I was pregnant with Alice. And we were wandering the streets of Rochester. Yes, we were. It, it was pretty interesting, Leslie, uh, when I first met you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to give yeah. Timothy a hard time because he made me walk a couple extra blocks as I was Jeez. eight months pregnant. And you were not that innocent. So <laughs> I'm you forget sure. what happened to the mall and all that other stuff. So pay back. You got me back. Yeah. He was like, oops, I forgot a turn. Let's go uphill a couple more blocks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you were doing, but... Yeah. Five years. Well, congratulations, Timothy. You've definitely done a lot of work. Yeah. Well, thank you. Absolutely. And I couldn't have done it without you guys. So, hey, you guys are. Hey, I did nothing. (laughs) Don't give her any credit. Uh, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You just you just fell off the tree and we found you. (laughs) Basically, (laughs) pretty much how it happened. Parachuted in. Parachuted in. You guys have taught me a lot. So there you go. Yeah. Well, we're going to do a test later on. So we're going to see what we do. Yeah. I'm not good at test taking. All right. Well, very exciting stuff. And congrats, uh, Timothy. That is a big anniversary. So we're excited, though. Today's guest is a leader dog ambassador who's established a student organization of puppy raisers at the college campus he works at. Graham Harper is the Dean of the Honors College at Oakland University in Michigan. And until 2011, he was a visiting researcher at the University of Texas Medical Branch in Galveston. And prior to that, he was based in the United Kingdom, where he led a number of university schools. He's a fiction writer and has published books on the future of education. Dr. Harper, welcome to the podcast. Let's start at the beginning. What brought you to Oakland University way back when? (laughs) <laughs> well, good morning. It's great to be with you. Uh, yeah, it's fantastic. I was, I was down in uh, Texas and it was on a short, short-term short appointment. I was actually, as I say, based in, uh, you know, Wales. And uh, and in many ways, it was unexpected. I just commented on how wonderful everything looked at Oakland. And next thing you know, I was being interviewed and uh, off we went. So we left uh, we left Britain in uh, July of 2011 and was basically I was starting here in, in August. So uh, fabulous school, um, unexpected and just absolutely thrilled to have arrived here. And now it's coming up for, well, 13 years. Wow. That is a crazy yeah. story. <laughs> I didn't know what to say, but wow. <laughs> Talk about a leap of faith. Yeah. So 13 years. Tell us how that went. I mean, not only is that starting at a new university, but also just a huge move and culture shock. Yeah, well, we'd spent a lot of time backwards and forwards in the United States, but, you know, perhaps people can tell from the accent. I was born in Australia and then and then we were in Britain for n- nearly 20 years. 
And uh, so we knew, knew the United States reasonably well from about the mid-1990s, but the concept and the idea of moving here was, uh, you know, just a dream, really. It wasn't anything we thought we'd ever do. And then this, as I say, it was a weird set of circumstances, and next thing you know, I was interviewing for the job. And Oakland, you know, in many ways is an institution that has all these hidden gems, and... Uh, you know, I think in that sense, it, it was sort of fortuitous, but also maybe maybe we were on the same you know kind of wavelength from the start. You know, and and ultimately I arrived and realised you know, again the honours college here is is a long and prestigious history. The whole thing was kind of bizarre, but at the same time, it was uh, you know almost as if it was fated to happen. Yeah, it naturally felt like a right fit right away. Right. That's wonderful. So you came to Leader Dog in 2019. What attracted you to Leader Dog? Yeah, it was a combination, actually. Funny enough, I mean, I'd, I'd driven past quite a bit and I was kind of intrigued and I really should have dropped in. You know, it's that whole thing about you're not sure always, you know, who's who's invited, who's not invited to places, but I was always intrigued. Uh, and uh, the former mayor of Rochester, Michigan, uh, Jeff Cuppets, and uh, Jeff said to me once, yeah, you should really meet the folks there. And I, and I said, yeah, you know, I'd really like to one day. Anyway, I, I decided to set uh, a book for the um, freshman colloquium cl- class, and it's uh, there are around about 500 students that join the Honors College at Oakland every year, so it's a pretty big group of students. And the book that I chose is a wonderful poetic book called Have Dog Will Travel mm-hmm. uh, by Steve Cazisto. And it's a, it's a fabulous story, but it's also incredibly well written. Uh, Steve's a poet. Uh, he was at Syracuse University for many, many years. Uh, and it tells his own story uh, about getting a dog, guide dog a little later in life than perhaps uh, was would have been planned normally. And, and, and the fact that he'd actually just gone everywhere after that and and really got the chance to be uh, mobile and, and, and empowered and so on. I thought it was a terrific story. Well, the students loved it, uh, absolutely loved it from the start. I loved it, of course. Um, so we headed on over and were invited very warmly to come and get to know uh, what Leader Dog did and indeed what it, what it does and uh, the sorts of things that... Uh, uh, were happening in, in puppy raising and so on and so on, just a whole package of things. So we brought um, about 35 students over and ca- they came over two or three times before we set off into the book. And then we had over 500 students, as I say, reading that book uh, through the fall semester of 2019. Uh, I went to our vice president of uh, student affairs at that point uh, as well and said, hey, this is very cool. I think we'd like to build build a better relationship here. So that's where it all started. But there's, there's much more to the story. But that, that essentially is the starting point. And I think it started with that incredible positiveness um, that's continued ever since. So we're thrilled to be to be working with Leader Dog. Yeah, that is amazing that it started with a book, essentially, yeah. and right, turned right. into this great relationship. Now, if you could tell us, you have a future Leader Dog student organization that you established on the university campus. Can you tell us how that got started and how it's going? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's very much a student organization, and I say that almost too obviously, but I think the, the point is I love to see it that it's a student-driven thing. I, I mean, I'm notionally the faculty advisor and, you know, the Honours College supports it and so on. But I really like to emphasise it's the students that have driven it and the students that, that make it happen. But it did need a little bit of discussion to start off with. You know, it did, it did need some sort of connection making. And as I say, uh, Vice President of Student Affairs, Glenn McIntosh and I got together and I said, you know, really would love to do this, Glenn. Uh, student organisations at Oakland are based in student affairs. So even though uh, we're over in academic affairs, of course, with our academic programs, I needed to make sure we could set up a, a student organisation. So we did that. And um, from day one, students jumped in. I mean, they really wanted to get involved. They wanted to lead, lead the organisation. Some of them were coming out of that uh, freshman class, not fresh them, fresh them themselves, but actually uh, some of the leaders, the freshman group leaders. So we had teaching assistants that said, hey, I, I'd like to actually do this. Um, so, you know, the, the book generated the the initial idea, but I think it was fundamentally the, the connection student made students made straight away. I mean, it just, it didn't surprise me in some ways, but in other, other ways, it was just totally remarkable. They kind of got it. Um, and, and, and the way they got it was absolutely, absolutely driven by this idea that what, how can we help, what can we get involved in and, and what's involved? And, and from there on in, it's been the, the most vibrant student organisation I've ever seen. Uh, so incredible, really. 
Yeah, it's so amazing that we have campus puppy raisers. So we have certain campuses that are involved, and Oakland is one of our biggest ones, and you guys are so involved. And the amount of exposure that our puppies get in that first year of life is amazing because they're on a college campus. They're seeing so many different things in so many different places. I'm currently puppy raising with my marketing team, and it is a lot of work. So it's a lot of dedication. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of commitment. And um, to see this dog that you'll have for a year and sharing it, you know, on the campus as well, um, it is great that this has turned out to be a thing that has continued now to this day. Um, And I know... You had mentioned um, previously that this, so the students run it, but there's also people that help out with it. If you could explain a little bit more about that, like who helps out with it? How many people are raising the puppies at once? How does that all work? Yeah, so it, it is intriguing in terms of the network of people that that assist. I, I would say, you know, in many ways, the students have developed this professional approach that has been so well received by faculty and staff too. So they uh, they alert people to the fact that they're raising a puppy. They have a formal way of doing that. It's it's friendly but formal. They make sure that they uh, you know have approvals to bring uh, their puppies into into laboratories and you know classrooms and so on. So they do all that. But at the same time, obviously. Obviously, we've got people within the Honours College, myself, uh, and our executive secretary as well, um, that just kind of help out to keep things going within the Honours College. So we've obviously got a sort of home base uh, that the students can come back to on campus and, and get support as well. Uh, you know, obviously, the puppy racing folks from Leader Dog have been incredibly supportive of, of everything as well. So there's a real sense of a network of support. Um, the raisers themselves, of course, have campus buddies that help out, and there's a whole bunch of uh, campus buddies who who basically agree to to a puppy sit, as it were, uh, if there is any situation where the, uh, the puppy can't visit a, a lab or a, or a classroom, which occasionally happens. So there's a range of those folks who've been involved as well. Um, it's a real posit- positive network, as I say, and I think one of the things that then happens is that folks show their interest as much as they can. So there's folks that are absolutely going to get involved in raising, the folks that just want to connect and say, hey, I support you. Uh, what can I do to help? And then it's basically having the home base in the Honours College has really helped. So we're not an organisation, and I say we're, we're um, even though, as I say, it's students <laughs> that drive it. Um, the organisation is not uh, just for Honours College students, it's for the entire campus, but we make sure that the Honours College is there and support. Um, and I think that that's been the the easiest way to to set it up for everybody so we take responsibility at that point um but yeah lots of people lots of lots of excited people saying hey how what can we do more you know it's so interesting you never know sometimes where these relationships when they start where they're going to go and how they're going to develop and you know it started with a book and a tour and it's built into something so elaborate really and so many people have been involved and the great thing is is these students then go on and a lot of them continue to raise outside of the campus life and it's really a lifelong you know commitment and impact and they're telling their friends and so you just never know when one small little conversation or incident is going to lead to um, which is something that we think about all the time when we're doing presentations at schools and things like that. There's just sometimes an immediate buy-in that has such a a return on investment, really. But I'm curious, in the years since you've been doing this, how many dogs do you know, how many future leader dogs you guys have raised on your campus? Well, it's it's 15, which is not too bad. Uh, And again, the number will rise. There's been 160 people involved uh, doing that, you know, and I think that's the other thing. Um, Knowing the, the histories and again, you know, this this evolution of some education and not just folks that have been interested. I think everybody around the Honours College in particular is now educated on how, uh, at least a little bit, on how the, the process works, which again is fascinating. But I say 15, they've gone all over the place. You know, there's been uh, leader dogs uh, that have been racing the program that have ended up in Spain. Uh, you know, it, it's just a fabulous story to tell. But yes, it's, it's, it's just been terrific in terms of that um, success. But I think uh, it doesn't necessarily reflect the number of people that have been behind it. So as I say, 160 is a lot of people. (laughs) That is a lot of people. A lot of people who are being educated on how a service dog works as well. And they're able to spread the mission for wherever they go in their life. So that is a lot. Yeah, it is. It, it, it surprised me. I, th- I thought we better check in just to make sure. Uh, and of course, every year we, and we'll do it again in, in September, we have uh, the student president, the current president, Mackenzie Nichols, is absolutely a dynamo. I want to give a shout out to 
Mackenzie. I mean, just a puppy raiser herself, obviously, but, you know, just such great support uh, for other other students. And uh, we get the organisation off of Mackenzie and a few others to come along to our freshman colloquium class, which is called Making Discoveries. And that's where the book was read, you know, five years ago now. Uh, so they come along and they describe it. And it's amazing. You see 500 students in that, that class and, and uh, they get asked, you know, who, who'd like to get involved? And, you know, it, it, it's like most of the hands go up. So, you know, lots of people show the interest to start off with. You know, obviously we know there's logistics and the reality of the thing that not everybody will be able to be involved, but the, the, the passion initially and the, uh, the way people respond and, and those freshman students who literally are just starting college themselves. So, you know, in many ways they've got other things on their, on their mind, but they're str- straight in there. They're straight up for it. So when you get a dog, is it like, like one student for one dog or is there many students for one dog? You know, it's yeah, <laughs> it's a good question, Timothy, because I think in some ways it's many people for one dog because we're all interested. Um, you know, so the dog comes in and we celebrate. Um, again, Mackenzie's current uh, current puppy is, is Henry, and uh, Henry comes in and the whole of the Honors College flocks around Henry. Um, but, <laughs> but it is indeed one student, one dog with lots of other folks. But, I mean, the puppy raisers connect themselves to people as well so that they're available for uh, the raiser at the time. Uh, but, you know... I think uh, at, at points throughout the, uh, the the year, you know, people are aware of uh, which puppies are being raised and who's coming in and uh, who's who's about to go back, and everybody's kind of got fingers crossed uh, for the success of, uh, of of the puppy and 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 so on. It's just uh, as I say, we we. we we have a kind of community more than more than just one person out on their own, and I think that's what's made it successful. Really, it's that sense that yes, okay, you you are indeed taking the responsibility as the puppy raiser, but you're you're not alone. Do you know what your success rate is with these dogs? Interestingly, t- uh, ten folks have raised fifteen puppies, and I'm thinking how many have been successful in terms of have gone on. And I can't think of the ex- exact figure to be honest. Um, at first, we weren't. I, I say we weren't doing well. I think the students were doing brilliantly, <laughs> but you, we know what it's like at the at those final hurdle stages. And you know, some didn't get through. Had such passion at the first uh, the first president of the student uh, organisation of the future leader dog organisation. She was determined that her puppy would make it, and he and he didn't. He now lives happily at home with her, of course, as many <laughs> yeah. tend to do. Um, but he didn't make it, and, and then it took a couple more before before we had our first success in that in that respect. Uh, as I say, our, our executive secretary in the Honors College got involved as well with her daughter. Um, you know, and I, I, it, it's been a pretty good success rate, but I, I can't pluck that figure out of my head at the moment. And really, Ray, ultimately, it's great success, no matter how many dogs actually go on to be leader dogs, even those that are career changed sometimes might find alternate careers. And right. again, it's just spreading that mission. So the more dogs yeah. you're raising, the more people that are getting involved in the mission. And so it's it's just all around an absolute win. But I know you guys have had several that have been very successful and are out working with um, clients and, and changing lives. But not only have you really been a part of the, the, the future leader dogs and the puppy race program, but the School of Engineering has designed surgical Mm -hmm. tables for our vet clinic and tactile maps. And so there has been such a partnership and collaboration between us. Can you tell us a little bit more about some of those outside puppy raising? Yeah, that's really interesting too. And the funny thing is until we came over back in 2019 uh, to to sort of introduce the students for the first time and start to to get a sense of it, I I didn't know, the students certainly didn't know that engineering had had also also been involved. So, you know, in some ways this is one of the, the, the... great things about this partnership, you start to see, see that people have formed relationships along the way on different levels. So, you know, engineering obviously has been involved in some of those things that include, uh, you know, bra- braille related things and and, and veterinarian related uh, equipment and so on. And, and w- discovering that, I was able to talk to, to the Dean of Engineering about how this partnership went well beyond the Honours College. And I think that's exactly it. It's a sort of sense in which people have shown an interest and I by having the student organisation, it's now allowed us to actually maybe connect a little bit more across the board and sort of folks that do want to get involved. I know the student organisation and certainly a number of the students from the Honours College have done some volunteer work with outreach events uh, with Leader Dog. Uh, I was thrilled to go along to Bark and Brew this year and, and bump into previous graduates of Oakland who were long-time uh, puppy raisers. And again, you see that the Oakland community has professors and former professors who have been involved. Uh, but it wasn't necessarily, you know, 
on the radar, if you like. And, and I think that's the thing with the student org. It's allowed us to actually start to show that the interest has been there for many years. It's just not been centralised or, or promoted, if you like. And and I think now it's it, it's really doing that. So, yeah, it's, it's a great relationship. I mean, I've said to people before, it's very unusual to have what I keep saying is a fabulous opportunity uh, to have Lead Dogs for the Blind in Rochester and obviously um, a university here to, to work. So, I mean, you know. Oh, absolutely. And we, you know, use your campus so often for training with clients for both Guide Dog, o and our teen summer camp. We use it almost every summer. We've done actual tours yeah. there and gone behind the scenes and kind of seen the dorm rooms and, and all sorts of stuff. But we use um, accessible GPS a lot and we always kind of need this open area. And your campus is absolutely perfect for that. And especially for our teens during that camp because they are going and doing college campus tours. And so it's a mm-hmm. great place for us to kind of mock that and, and give them a real life example of how they can go to whatever college. And maybe it is Oakland University. Um to, to practice these different skills. And so it's just been phenomenal, uh, the, the relationship. And we always feel so welcome there and so supportive. And everybody is so kind and generous. And it's just, it's fantastic. So I love hearing about all the things that have happened since uh, your start and, and kind of bringing our organizations together. And then, of course, all the stuff with the engineering, too. And we recently learned, Christina and I were having a fantastic conversation with Melissa Wise, our new CEO and president, who you two uh, have connected throughout the years quite frequently, but she informed us that 15% of our leader dog team members are OU alumni, which I found fascinating. I mean, it's amazing, isn't it? Again, it, it sort of makes sense, but you don't immediately think of it. A few of few of those folks, of course, are honors college graduates as well. So that's kind of cool for me. So yeah, indeed. And do you have any advice for any universities who might be hearing this podcast right now and they're like, hey, I want to start this on my campus. Any advice for them to get the, a puppy raising pro puppy raising program started? The difficulty is it gets it gets a little emotional because I think for me, what I've seen um, goes beyond goes beyond programs and academics and even even your average student organization in terms of its reason for existing. What you see happen is a shift in the way students understand empathy and you see commitment, and responsibility and the kind of things that you hope you'd see students gain through a college education, you see happening. And you see it happening because of the partnership with Leader Dog. Now, to my mind, that's why it's worth doing even before you realise what impact it's going to have on somebody well beyond those students who, who will benefit from having Leader Dog. So I would say... Yes, every every campus, every institution is going to ask itself, you know, what, what is the risk of doing this? What's the impact on our environment of doing this? You know, what do we have to invest to do this? Can we afford to do this? All those questions, and that's right to ask them. But I would say take the risk. If you think there's a risk, take it because the benefits go well beyond what you can imagine. That is so kind and so nice and so true, right? We talk about the leader dog family all the time and just the connections and what you're saying, right? Just inspiring students uh, to be a part of something bigger and work collaboratively. And another great thing that has come out of this relationship is also advocating for people on your campus who are blind or visually impaired, right? Recognizing that their, you know, accessibility needs and what can we do to make the campus more accessible or more Uh, proactive about service dogs on campus. And so I know you guys have done a lot of work in that area too, because bringing awareness is half the battle. Oh, for sure. And I think it's, again, it it spreads beyond. Uh, We've got a lot more interest, I think, in people realising what accessibility uh, can or should mean. Uh, I think there's a lot more interest in thinking about what a positive community partnership can mean. You know, it it really does sort of build build building blocks to to create something magnificent. So, you know, people look at it. Again, you mentioned Melissa before. I think it's wonderful. Melissa always talks about Leader Dog as a a person, a a centred organisation even though we often focus on the dogs. Uh, obviously, that's the thing that comes across too. You really get a sense of people helping people. And, and you know, I think it's what campuses campuses like to say that they, they, they believe in, you know, but this, this, is, uh, this is what it does. And, and it's a miraculous thing to, to be involved in. It's fabulous to see that the students are driving it. And I think that's the other thing to remember, that this is something where relatively young people, most of them are, you know, 18, 19, 20 years old, uh, are taking charge of something 
something that they know is going to be the benefit for other of other people, which you know is just miraculous. That's wonderful. Well, we want to thank you for all of the incredible work that you have done in fostering this relationship and building the the puppy raising program. And just again, all of those other, so many things to talk about in collaboration. And of course, thank you for joining us today. And we know that you are very, very busy. Uh, so we certainly appreciate your time. An absolute pleasure. Great to be with you. We'll see you soon. Yes. And thank you so much to our listeners for listening to the Taking the Lead podcast. I'm Leslie Hoskins with hosts Timothy Cuno and Christina Hepner. We hope you enjoyed learning about Dr. Harper and his work at Oakland University. Please join us next time as we continue to dive into the world of blindness. And if you'd like to learn more about applying to our free services at Leader Dog or volunteering to be a puppy raiser or learning more about our campus programs, you can head to leaderdog.org or call us at 888 777-5332. Don't forget, you can reach us at takingthelead at leaderdog.org with any questions or ideas. If you like today's podcast, make sure to hit subscribe and check us out wherever podcasts stream.